Welcome, welcome very, very much to Conversation. I'm very pleased to have welcome to the program now uh, Clinton Ignatov, and he's a young man who is like a, 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 a computer, uh, how, do you de how do you designate yourself? A computer something. Oh, hobbyist. No, Lifelong hobby. Lifelong enthusiast. No, but you're also a geek or something. Or what, <laughs> the, the, the thing we're using for your name is, uh, is uh, what is that? What is it on there, Jodosian? Our, my handle on the internet has been Clinton the Geek for over Clinton 12 years. The and geek. I've had it so long I can't get rid of it Right, <laughs> Clinton the Geek. Yeah, the geek is a lovable term for people who are interested in the internet. And Clinton is, uh, we say Clinton's in uh, Canada. And he's a person who's understanding as a younger person and very, very uh, self-motivated to understand the computer and the, and the internet and so forth. And we have a mutual friend in Bob Dobbs who's over in Hawaii. And we'll be talking to Bob Dobbs and Carol. And you know Carolyn also, don't you, his wife? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, she, they're a wonderful team. We're going to be doing a program with them later. They're in Hawaii. But welcome so very much to the program. Really good to see you. You're looking good, uh, Clinton, and it's good to be in touch with you by Skype. Thanks, Harold. Now, tell us, let's, let's start a little bit like this. You're very, very knowledgeable of the computer and of Skype and of the technology, and you've really self-educated yourself, and you're trying to understand it in a very interesting way. And so I wonder, maybe we could start off with, why don't you share uh, your, your, wh where you were born and raised, that kind of stuff. Let's wade in and then get into what your real interest in is understanding in depth the computer, what it means, what's developing, where is it going, and all those kind of things. But just introduce yourself, young man, if you could, to the audience. All right. I was uh, born in uh, Scarborough. Ontario, uh, Toronto, you could say, in the late 80s. And uh, we grew up in a small town just outside of Barrie, Ontario. And uh, I got the first computer in my house when I was about uh, six. So this would be about 1994-ish. Oh that's, that's amazing, yeah, six, yeah. Oh yeah, and I was hooked. I was exploring the insides and outs, every single thing on it, learning how to use DOS and old Windows and whatnot. And yeah. um, and uh, oh yeah, no, it's been my life ever since. We we had um, Macintosh um, computers in my school. Uh, mm -hmm. They they were very popular in education at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, I stuck with it all through high school. I started using uh, GNU Linux. I installed um, different versions of operating systems to try to learn how how they work. And I I even started to go to university in a computer science degree. I'll, Although um, I, I didn't stick with it the whole, the whole way, uh, so um, uh. no. But uh, I've always been uh, very involved. Um, you know, my um, my mom would probably say too much. So yeah, but, right. Uh, no, yeah, she would say that. Yeah, yeah. What he's back looking at those computers again, Dad? What are we gonna <laughs> do with Clinton? Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, get but, off I mean, that I was able to make Money business. on that. I was yeah, a bit right. of an entrepreneur. Yeah, helping you are, people you're, you're around town. You're you're entrepreneurially inclined, also, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, oh. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you in your okay. So, uh, uh, that's that's why we're talking with you now. Uh, what what is what is your your? We're, we've got a lot. The picture just because you can't see it, but the picture is a lot of old, old, old computer stuff from about a hundred years ago. Over you know that and everything, and then yourself framed in the upper part of the corner, and so. Um, what what is your um, uh, uh, your your current state of understanding uh, the past and the present, and then let's get into the future of <coughs> this wondrous thing called computing, and particularly with particular reference to the use of Skype <coughs> as we're doing now. <coughs> Excuse me, I got a little tickle in my throat. So just introduce yourself, please. Sure. Um, well, for the past couple of years, I've uh, developed a strong interest in um, trying to unearth and make explainable the uh, history of computing, uh -huh. because I think it's a story that's uh, because of all the technical details that are involved. It's not told like in the same way that we hear about stories of uh, inventions, like the invention of the telephone or or, or whatnot. Um, innovations in computers don't tend to be explained very well and there's so much um, you know science fiction and television that gets it all you know wrong or or simulates it right so i feel like um 
there's a lot of knowledge out there which uh, isn't being culturally disseminated in a broader sense. So oh. um, I think that also um, affects um, how people look at things like smartphones or yeah. social media when they're yeah. trying to uh, understand events in the world today. I think we're, coming... all, yeah, we're all trying to do it, particularly some of our older people, like myself, is we're really trying to understand this phenomenon because it's like a locomotive just changing everything in the world. And I'm happy mm -hmm. you as a younger person is picking up and uh, taking up the slack there and could help us understand it better. Maybe try and make things simpler for the people that are having a hard time with the complexity of it all. That's just mm -hmm. a little wish and uh, hope that you could make it a little easier for me to be able to understand the computer. Uh, because I think people of your age, maybe they can understand it and uh, meld with it more easily than the older people, yeah. Mm -hmm. The uh, perspective I've, I've been reaching, what, what I think is, is that uh, you basically you've got two camps. You've got yeah. computers that are easy to use, mm -hmm. but then you're not really using the computer at all. You're using what's called a user interface. You're learning what the buttons mean on the screen. You're learning uh, you know, how to use this one app. What's an app? It's a way to apply the computer to a specific purpose in your life. And that's probably 90% of people out there. They're just using the app for the specific thing. So when word processors came along in the 70s and 80s, they replace typewriters. You buy the computer so that you have a new typewriter. Uh huh. Yeah. And then you've got the other camp, which is seeing the computer for themselves. That's more me, right? And you know, this is all the mysterious hackers and and whatnot. And it's all very mystified and spooky and scary. And and uh, you you probably have a job somewhere in Silicon Valley making money developing apps, right? So there's these two totally different, unconnected cultures. What was the all first, looking at the same machine yeah. through completely different lenses. What was, the, I, fir what was the first uh, one that you identified there? Uh, the, uh, the culture of, say, the Apple Macintosh, which is yeah. computers should be for everyone because they're easy to use. Right? right? You don't need to understand what's going on inside. Just learn how, how to use the menus and the buttons to do the, the thing you want it to do. Now, is, right? that, Just, is that something that's recommended to a great number of people who don't care about knowing all the details? Yeah, that's basically what computers are to most uh -huh. people who own them. Yeah. You know, you just learn how to use it and uh, and you're looking at the content. Well, well what, uh, one of my greater uh, influences for this was the work of uh, Canadian media theorist and English professor Marshall McLuhan. Oh, yeah. Who you've talked about in your program in the past. You've had yeah. Paul Levinson on, for instance, who yeah. talked about the, with McLuhan. So he was used to talk about the difference between the medium and the content. Yeah. Well, most people, they only see the content of the computer and they don't look at the machine itself, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of the divide I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find ways to talk about in a way that, that kind of bridges these two different views. Yeah, like an automobile. Uh, you could, you, if you can drive the automobile, you don't care about what the engine does on the third spark plug from the left and how do you get at it and how do you get a jack up to get at it all that kind of stuff. You just want the damn thing to work. And mm -hmm. it's got a great capability to uh, to communicate in a multimedia way, and it's got great capability for that. And they're they're not interested particularly in the b nuts and bolts of it. Uh, that's the bulk of the people in the world, I guess, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. But there is and a great deal of complexity that some people who are real denizens are interested in, like as an engineering kind of thing uh, of the mind to understand mm -hmm. this thing. What's this thing called computers? You know, there used to be a song, what's this thing called love? You know, that's a big song that was popular, but this is, they want to understand it. And there's some people who will want to understand how an automobile works or something or a refrigerator. And those Certainly. are people that are denizens, that's the term you use. Uh, 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 what is the term you use to identify yourself? Oh, um, when um, there it is. the information netizen. netizen. N yes, and being a good netizen was was a very core part of um, polite, civilized uh, internet culture in mm. the early days, which kind of gets swamped out when it gets too popular, mm. right? Yeah. But good netizenship was was a very uh, noble principle, I think, for behaving yourself online in a way that, say, lots of Twitter users don't do nowadays, right? Maybe no I one tells people that they should be behaving themselves online. Everyone's learning the hard way what happens when uh, you're free for all styling blowback in some sort of, you know, like there's all sorts of 
fights today be because I think of a lack of education on uh, the context of just the history of computers before you bought one and started y using it, right? Wh yeah. Whoever you are in my yeah. hypothetical. Yeah, it's like, it's like a minor miracle you can do all of that. It's amazing. And it's all changing. It seems to me maybe the, the, the rate of the change and innovation and new developments is exponential nearly now. And maybe you're familiar some with mathematics and explain normal arithmetic uh, uh, as opposed to exponential. And it's particularly characteristic of the computer or cyber world, perhaps more so than other aspects of the evolving of the human scenario and its, its extensions. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Would that be fair to say? No, that's, that's precisely right. There's an excellent yeah. article in uh, this month's Vanity Fair magazine uh, entitled uh, The Birth of the World Wide Web, okay. which is an excellent, it's an excellent introduction to um, the history of computers and the internet over the past 50 years as it was developed. Uh -huh. um, and uh, what happened, I'll, I'll, to, to supplement the story, yeah. I'll say that uh, in 1993 when what's called the World Wide Web got popular. Okay. Um, uh -huh. That's when anyone could make their own website and connect a whole bunch of links to other websites and everyone started pouring their own stuff on and connecting it together faster than could be organized or ma or managed. That's really the explosion of cyberspace. And that's been going on. <laughs> it has been exponential, geometric, for the past um, 25 years. Now, is that um, a large part of what the cyber world thing, uh, uh, phenomena, is about? Is absolutely. That, I mean, uh, yeah. in the late 90s, um, uh, there were all sorts of different ways to try and organize it. And the one which survived was the invention of something called a search engine, uh -huh. which was just trying to find a way to, okay, I want to search for something. And out of that, we got Google, for instance. Yeah. But uh, now, phenomenal, nowadays, pe phenomenal, people yeah. use Google yeah. as the go-to source. They, lots cool. of people, I think, rely on Google as their only way to find anything. Well, right? I certainly and do. That's I a matter of... Um, there's, there's an expression, let's Google it. And it's just yeah. what everybody uses it. And I don't wonder because it's really almost miraculously touching into the whole body of whatever there is to know in the world in a way that's very interesting and easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so um, there's lots of conversations today about um, monopolies or the centralization or, oh, Google owns the whole Internet. And I would say most people have only heard of Google and so they go there. But I... I, um, for instance, I use DuckDuckGo, which is a different search engine, right? There's so much more variety in cyberspace than gets talked about in mainstream culture. Most um, people use Google. Most people do because they it comes preloaded on their phone. It's easy to use. Everyone's heard about it. It's what? right. The, yeah. the issues of branding and marketing and cultural capital yeah. are more influential on the world than the actual technology themselves because no one knows how to use the technology beyond the easy to use you got taught how to do it this way. This is the only way you know how to do it. These uh, yeah. silos of um, yeah. yeah. Other other examples have come out of the technological development or historical development of technology, and we had a thing called uh, telegraph, and then we got a thing called telephone, and I can remember telephone being a really complex thing at a time when you had a heck of a time if you were trying to put a call between Paris and New York, you had to line up and get all kinds of all kinds of clearances from this and that, and they would do everything but have semaphore moving to get the thing working and everything, and it was very complex. And then there's a movement towards simplicity, and that makes it very more uh, available to great numbers of people, because I think people really want to have the simplicity, and it's almost creeping up the, the incredible implications of the systems that are being developed maybe in the labs at a very high level of cyber smarts and everything like that, huge capabilities that it's hard to get across in a simple way, but that's one of the challenges of the people who are really responsible for this incredible thing called the computer and so forth. So mm -hmm. uh, you, we've got certain companies, and how do you see that? Are you afraid of um, there becoming too much concentration in one or two companies or something? like there was with the telephone at the time or not? Is the situation open to innovation 
Uh, is there enough attention given over to simplifying it rather than rhapsodizing about all the complexity that can be done with a certain mindset that likes to examine complexity, you know, for that reason? Or can you address all of that? And what's the likely development and future of those two things working in terms of the exponential increasing capability of information uh, manipulation through the internet and the and the computer? Mm -hmm. um, the case of simplicity is interesting because most people, they want to get on with what they're doing. Right. And so they, they like things to be as simple as possible. And computers do do that. However, it's uh, those of us like, uh, I like to look at the complexity so that I can see every level of what's going on. When things are too simple, you aren't paying attention to the terms of service you agreed to or the privacy contract that you agreed to. And you don't know or care that advertisers are tracking everything you do and uh, and um, you know creating a profile on you and agreeing to use your image um, however they deem fit um, when things are simple people don't look at the details and the devil is in the details with lots of this software so I'm trying to think of how to strike a balance between yeah. the necessity of a complex thing being portrayed in its full complexity in an open and transparent manner yeah, but um, that's that's going to leave a lot of particularly older people behind. They just can't keep up with it because the older well, you get, you get set in your ways and so forth. And so, and there is something to be said for complexity. Uh, there's a lot of examples of that with the telephone. When you got it down, you used to be able to just you had to do all kinds of things to do it or to get the earliest examples, line up for a long time to wait and so forth. But then being able to take advantage of the simplicity of something that has incredible implications is part of the equation. Is that because it's a business thing and it's being driven, the whole industry is being driven by a business mentality, by and large, the Google people, the, the other people that are setting the, the trend for that, all the things going on in Palo Alto and all the rest of the places where the leaders of the understanding of it Marshall McLuhan went and took great attention to it, like you mentioned him, uh, in terms of the implications to the human condition of, let's say, print, which is part of something we've used over the centuries in order to put down some thoughts and so forth, and then the telephone, and then the movie, and the whole procession. And that whole process is getting down and culminating in the computer and the uh, the networking of the computers around the world, and it's moving again exponentially, and it ought to be um, it ought to be something other than just uh, details of the business model or oriented, which would be the reason people would want to go into detail, maybe to get a little advantage over the competition. There's a lot of competition in the entrepreneurial class interested in those things, but the sociological and the historical implications of it all should be also made available to mass society in a way that can be understood because you could get lost in all of the language that is used to describe the complexity. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I'm glad you mentioned uh, the Telegraph and Marshall McLuhan. Yeah, a um, major guy, yeah. Abso yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. he, he pointed out how uh, electric communication um, contracted people's uh, world. Uh, uh -huh. the, the Telegraph lets you find out about things happening all over the world all at once and mm. it sort of broke people away from the geography of where they're at and the whole world was suddenly um, um, connected but mm. what that meant is people had so much useless information coming from all over the place that it was harder to make sense of. Furthermore, the Telegraph messages were very short, right? It cost a lot of money to send a Telegraph and so newspapers began um, working with less information and headlines became smaller and communication went from big long conversations and tons of words uh, to shorter and shorter and sweeter and tighter so Marshall McLuhan would go on and on about how jokes were getting shorter and advertisements were shrinking and everything was turning into a headline or a punchline yeah which uh, I think that's exactly what Twitter um, does today at the same time. Well, that's the um, ultimate expression, isn't it? I mean, not, not ultimate, but I mean, there will probably be something beyond Twitter. 144 characters or something. I think that's 12 to the 12th power, 12, you know, is there a, a, a reason that it's 144 characters or something? Yes, that one, made that it, possible? there's a technical reason, which is um, 
their uh, text messages on older cell phones were limited to that long because they were taking advantage of a tiny leftover bit of information that was uh, not being used in the cellular protocol. And secondly, when the message is only 144 characters, um, mm. it's a little bit longer now, but when it's very short, it is you, longer. Um, you aren't yeah. wasting uh. the celebrity's time, right? Uh. A celebrity can sit around and read, um, you know, uh, 500 tweets in a day, whereas before when they were getting fan mail that was really long, they wouldn't be able to reply to any, any of it. So by only t taking tiny bits of people's time, the communication becomes much denser. So that, that 12 to the 12th power multiplied by 12 by 12 wasn't some sort of law of physics that has to be maintained or something like that. It was expansive no. and it is able to be larger or something. It yes, wasn't a law of yes. physics. Yeah. They did make it just a little bit larger, but mm. not very much. It's no. basically the sweet spot between people's attention span and um, not having too much data that over overloads the old cellular network. I think I, I think you saw the program we did recently with Paul Levinson. Uh, yes. he, Paul Levinson's a great uh, uh, explication of uh, of the all these cyber issues and uh, Mark Stallman also. There's other people that are trying to take the measure, and you are trying to keep the measure of things and everything. But uh, he he uh, he's written very well on it. Who are uh, some of the other people who are trying to help explain? Let's just say at the popular level. Uh, explain or ease the population at large. There are peoples in more uh, uh, developing countries that maybe have a hard time just wading into it now, where much of the world is going lickety split and so forth. So, uh, educating and making the world uh, comfortable with the use of all the new applications and things that can be done through this incredible shrinking of the uh, the space between the parts of the world where a, 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 you know entrepreneurial things are, or just everyday living is going on, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, Political well, the, uh, too. Yeah. The, uh, the first thing that, that comes to mind would would be the the great institutions of the internet age, such as uh, the uh, Electronic Frontier Foundation, yes. which you can find at EFF.org, mm. and they do fantastic work trying to uh, navigate uh, ethical, um, citizen, um, like responsible, protecting the, the freedoms and rights in democracy, the use of computers and the internet. Um, they have a sense of netizenship. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, and I, another I favorite of mine be, is the Free Software might, Foundation, yeah. FSF.org, uh -huh. who, uh, who, who uh, maintain the rights for uh, me to own a computer that I can tear into and look at the guts and see what's really going on. I don't have to take anyone's word for it that, oh, we're not spying on you, don't worry. Um, the Free Software Foundation has been the most pivotal organization keeping computers free and open for private citizens to uh, understand and not uh, not be um, um, bound by proprietary software or getting told what to do from Silicon Valley or anyone else. Um, you, you, so you, yeah. So those two, the EFF and the Free Software Foundation, yeah. Yeah, you've incorporated a lot of in, uh, interest in the in the implications of it all, all of which sounds a little bit like what they called Dick Tracy in the old days. They had Dick Tracy, the detective, and you're you're out to find uh, uh, legal uh, boundaries that are detrimental to the privacy or to the interest of them. Particularly, that's the sort of thing that is practiced within the business world where a, 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 a period in one place and another means millions of dollars or something. So those, it's like a legal mentality, almost like that, that you're gonna find <laughs> really great uh, interest in that, whereas most of the citizens probably don't have occasion to do that. Or yes, well, we, when you're that. looking at law and when you're looking at computers, you're, lo <coughs> you're looking at two vast systems, which are in fact, um, compared to lots of things rather rigid and understandable and yeah. explicit. Yeah. So where law as a coherent system, theoretically, and computers as a coherent system quite literally and practically are coming together, I, I think that's the most interesting um, avenue to looking at uh, at computers and culture. For instance, um, there's lots of discussion about free speech and whether or not so-called platforms like Twitter and Facebook um, uh, Those you know, are social to, media. To what, uh, 
whether or not they can ban people for what reasons, who's crossing the line, who's saying what's <coughs> right and wrong. Those debates are flaring up around us today. Yeah. yeah. Those, those are things that they call, they seem to stick off in a corner or something called social media, uh, those things, and they're more new. There wasn't, a, there was a computer with a DOS or something long before there was Twitter. And it took oh, yeah. a development of the cap of engineering, engineering and capability. And that process is just set to just keep going, is it not? It's not, it's going to keep uh, providing more and more exponentially, more and more capability in the realm of information uh, and information yes. technology. Yes. And we should all be prepared for that and have some ideas of how we're going to be able to structure it in the way that's not only effective, but also available to people because there will be more and more people that will be available to be able to take advantage of what's becoming available to them if they can get past all the bells and whistles that they think they have to deal in order to protect themselves from the thieves. I think if that's so. The thieves um, may be too a, strong a word. Or uh, in, in the, uh, rent insurmountable seekers, well, uh, uh, problems that arise uh, technologically, yeah. Well, there's several points to be, to be made there. Um, <coughs> For instance, I think it's important to remember that your social network are, are all of your friends and family and colleagues who you talk to every day, and yeah. they are not the graph that is um, made up for you or the list of names you have added on Facebook or anything like that. Your social network is not a number. It's not a metric. It's not something that's owned or studied. Your social network are your other living, breathing friends and family who you can talk to through many different means besides however it is you're getting a hold of them today through the ease and convenience. Um, I think that that is sort of the ground of reality, which no matter how wild or crazy or exponential cyberspace and computers go, whether or not we get people with, you know, little uh, fake artificial intelligence friends who are programmed to be their best friend and and oh, I'm gonna go marry my robot doll. What, 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 whatever crazy science fiction stuff is coming down the line five, 10 years from now, you gotta remember um, that the technology is something that you control, that you buy, that you choose to use or not use. And I think there's gonna be a lot of um, people, frankly, um, sticking with uh, the old stuff, the old computers uh, that, they, that were simple enough for them to understand it still. And are gonna stick to the old protocols no matter what newfangled thing comes along because no matter what people um they want to be able to trust and and um uh, and understand what it is that they're doing yeah um, and the older somebody is in age the more they're likely to take that more conservative view of things because to tell you the truth you push a button and everything blows up it's very very <laughs> disconcerting you know you don't play with dynamite you know cavalierly and everything like that oh and sure also, and the, 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 e that, oh, the easiest connection mm. between you and your friends is always the one that's waved in front of your face that puts two different middlemen between you and your friend who can listen in for some reason, right? The, the easiest option, the one which, you know, is getting paid money to be the easiest and the most prominent is always the one that lets all these systems enter that frankly don't need to be a part of your private correspondence yeah, or yeah. your or your calendar keeping. There's no reason why your private calendar, what you're doing next Tuesday at three o'clock, why that should be going through some other server on the other side of the planet. Well, keep a piece of paper in, in your briefcase for heaven's sake, right? Like there's all these ways which technology is invasive um, in the name of being made simple that, uh, that um, it's going to require some vigilance and uh, and um, self control and maybe accepting the slower, harder, more difficult way through just to have the peace of mind. All well, right? that's that's a big issue that we're con confronted with and everything like that because it's creating these monumental uh, changes. Uh, one of the changes that's going on is there's becoming available to the average citizen our ability to deal with something other than just linear print that Mr. McLuhan used to talk about and so forth. And the world is very rapidly moving toward a multimedia capability that would have been undreamed of in terms of the bandwidth necessary to handle such an extreme thing beyond just the letters A, B, C, D and so forth. And so that the multimedia is emerging increasingly as a place where you will find the store of human knowledge emerging in what is called uh, educational in the best sense of the word or the store of human knowledge presented to populations without 
the use or the minimization initially, and then finally down to the use of, uh, 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 of storytelling or lessons in terms of understanding physics, history, law, whatever, uh, in a way that doesn't require print. And that when they get to where they can translate simultaneously and in real time, the 7,000 languages that exist among the population of the world, they might be able to get the whole store of human knowledge contained in highly uh, creative storytelling, uh, multimedia storytelling, films if you want to, with a voice recognition in every language in the world to the person who's watching and get beyond the need for print. And that's really upsetting to a lot of people because our, if that is the case, it seems to be it's emerging. You see the thing that uh, BBC has now, absolutely masterful presentation of the, of the earth uh, with, uh, mm -hmm. with a just a beautiful British accented uh, th thing. And all you, you, don't, you can do it without a single use of a letter alphabet. And so that's really upsetting because our society has been built upon the alphabet, Mr. McLuhan said, and we may be transcending <coughs> in so many institutions where the store of communication and particularly educational use of the media will be contained in like movies that present it with a voice and not the need of having the print. Yeah, I don't know, um, we're, we may be de getting past the, the linear perception of things philosophically and everything that has been a characteristic of the age that McLuhan called as the, the alphabet. We may be right. getting past that. And, what, the, and what, the constrictions uh, on human communication and structure of human institutions, maybe. The um, sort of uh, what, what you're describing is what McLuhan would call a, a mythological thinking. It's a way of compressing what would be too vast to be expressed in a linear form into tight mythological uh, f forms which arise from pattern recognition. And so we, we, oh, okay. we end up viewing the world through trends and slotting individuals into stereotypes and slotting oh. um, different events in the news as part of a bigger socio-cultural pattern such that one event that happens one place and another event that happens over here all get thought of as part of this, why is this one thing happening over and over and over again? People tend to compress reality into easy little mythological stories. Yeah, um, yeah, and so yeah. the sort of linear detail yeah. um, linear, prints culture. Linear, right, yeah, 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 go ahead, sorry, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. think print culture or linear culture is going away. Um, so what we're discussing is whether or not rational, logical, linear thinking will be constitutive of reality for most people, or whether the pictures on on their or the images on their multimedia experience will be constitutive of their reality, and um, and uh, this is something that postmodernism has uh, grappled with. There's yeah. an excellent book called *The Saturated Self* by uh, uh, Ken Gergen. I don't know. Which, yeah, Ken Gergen. Thanks. Yeah, go on, Brian. Uh, yeah, it and uh, yeah. It, it, it describes the postmodern condition as someone who is saturated <laughs> by so many images that they're going to be a different person or they're going to be in a different world at different times depending on the context. When I go out, I'm yeah. a party animal, but then when I'm at work, I'm a serious person. And they don't have within themselves a linear, structural, logical, um, you know, um, story or narrative, right? They're kind of everyone and no one, and it kind of pos posits the ideas of how to live without, um, you know, the principles of a logical, linear, typographical thinker. Yeah. Um, however, I think the internet is always gonna have lots of words on it and people are always gonna need lots of words on it. And so no matter what, we're always going to be coming back to words and letters and rational thinking and principles. It's just a matter of making those more accommodating and uh, and uh, closer to um, some sort of truth well, as way opposed we, to everyone being yeah. plugged into images. Because if you can watch a nature documentary, you can see it, the Not world nature, in action, but, but that uh, doesn't mean you know what to do when you're in a rainforest and you're trying to save whatever endangered species is going on. You're still going to have to read some books to actually do that. Well, okay, maybe. Of course, that's a thing we've had. I don't know when the print came into being, but it's been some thousands of years we've had it. And it certainly was after Gutenberg and so forth and all of this is part of a historical pattern. And our institutions reflect that. They specialize. There's a great deal of specialization taking place. And then expanding, uh, what do you think as a younger man, or what do you think about the uh, expressions of people who say that the exponential increasing capability of information manipulation and so forth 
it, that in the term of what you call robotization, that they're going to be able to do so many things that are because those divi differentiations have to do in large measure with the dissemination of ways by which people can get money in order to live. And that's what it's about. And the, 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 most of the things that are on the television end up having what is really driving it is the ad to sell something to somebody because it's a way of marketing in a way that people can live with and they're temporarily or they're temporally involved with what we've come out of history with. But if we get to be where they're, and then if you get into where it's gonna seriously undercut the labor input to production on a massive scale, which some people are seriously talking about, uh, the robots will be able, to, you know, the, the, you're, you're going to undercut the means by which people, on large, have been able to get what they call jobs or the, uh, eliminate jobs in a massive way, but have tremendous productive capability, let's say good stuff, that would make a better life for a whole bunch of people, but they're not going to need people to do it, cars that drive themselves and all this kind of thing, on a large scale, and it's going to undercut the labor theory of value that has largely informed what they call the left, certainly in terms of thinking, how important labor is to production. And it's gonna play hell on the political context if you don't have some alternate way to get money to people other than a metaphor with a serf on a feudal estate doing what they're told by a system in order to get money to buy things that make their life livable. And uh, you're gonna have to get market demand capability to clear the market of the good things that can be done. If you can understand, is there a danger of that? Or what do you think? Or just a thought as a young man? Well, uh, just my thoughts, because I'm certainly not an economist, but oh, um, no. uh, certainly but auto automation, yeah. um, things like self-driving cars, uh, there's so much of the employment is um, transportation. And, and so uh, yeah. the threat of self-driving um, vehicles just to truck drivers, for instance. Now you're always going to need someone to, to unload the truck. I mean, the level of automation. Not always. They could be mm. self. They could be. Say, you could. You you could make it more. Yeah. You, 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 the the labor input to production could be undercut massively. Yes, absolutely. In all fields, and that's well, the so way most it, people get money to buy bread and milk is by having so, a job, doing something that has to be done. But if it's displaced by a, 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 a automatic service. Uh, ma automatic system of information technology and displaces them, it's going to undercut their ability to have what they call market demand in order to be able to clear the market of the things that can be produced because they're going to have to have some way of being able to participate in the market. If they're not there as a producer, they could be there as a consumer. And that well, uh, what, uh, what is it that people will be paying other people to do for them if it's not the work that uh, automation takes away um likely uh well, wait a minute the automation is taking it away they won't have that opportunity right so what am i going to pay you to do if you want money I, no, you're and gonna i have, have money have some, what are you well, going to do that i want that you're 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 getting it from me well, I'm, one I, of the I, things, I'm not thinking of state solutions i'm thinking of market solutions well, and that's market, going to be yeah, more and more service economy um okay like maybe, um, yeah um, um more um Poor well, boy. I think it's going to go more towards role playing and fantasy elements, like funny themed restaurants and more of these. Uh, have you ever been in, in an escape room? It's sort of like a video I, game in real life, where they lock you in a room and there's a puzzle you need, you need to solve to get out, and you're searching the drawers and you're trying to like just Disneyland everywhere. That fantasy sounds like all over a lot the place. Like Everyone's life. an actor. <laughs> that sounds a lot like uh, major major areas of life. You know, you feel like, hey, how the hell am I going to get out of this one now? Yeah, but then. That's coming out of history and everything, yeah. But they're gonna, mm -hmm. have, no, the big shots, it's always been like the king in the castle, and then they had loyal retainers, and then they had barons, and then they had serfs and everything, and they had to have them to do all the things to make at any product uh, that was worthy of material development or that. But now they're gonna undercut, they got a tremendous capability of providing things good design of living spaces and things like this that can be done almost without, or it can vastly do away with the labor necessity to do these things. And that's going to cut into the people having what the, big, the, 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 the thinkers are mm -hmm. going to call market demand. So yeah. they're going to have to have maybe an alternate way 
of forming well, capital in a way where people get a capital stake in the productive process that is going to become capital intensive as a way of getting m money so that they get a return the way the rich guys do or have traditionally done. It's all been restored by a few people so that they right. can clear the market of the good things and have the good things without their life, their, their, their labor input which is no longer needed, isn't needed, but they can still have the good things of life I, and bring market I, I demand. Think new, new forms of labor will always be being innovated on the fly at a low level. Um, but mm. um, also uh, people who seek fulfillment in their life and who need a reason for living, once if, they're, um, you know, um, if their money situation is taken care of, what you see a lot of today is people um, taking on great causes and sometimes taking on causes with so much zeal and self-righteousness that they do more harm to the great causes that they take on. Uh, um, it's okay, an interesting, yeah, so okay. interesting social scene yeah. we see playing out where everyone, where where um, people are arguing on the internet self-righteously because they don't have anything better to do with their time. So like, well, I, yeah. I, I respect work insofar as it gives people a meaningful thing to spend their waking hours doing well not, if okay, it's not oppressive work, work could be something you can share you could have a poet doing something worthwhile something really I'm, worthwhile that's meaningful yes. and creative rather than turning on a line turning a nut all day when a robot can do it but it's producing yes. material wealth and we that's will see be arts. a problem we're going to be confronted with i think you know oh with technology the ability to, to create arts to create media um the barrier to entry is so low that yes, um, people are going to be spending time making wonderful creations on Wonder, the internet. I think it'd be grand. It would, I think it'd be mm -hmm. really good if we had a whole planet of artists, you know, or people that are doing something meaningful rather than some task just simply to get money to feed the kitties some milk or something. Oh, like they absolutely! Have to do. It's going to be a balance. We're going to have lots of artists out there, particularly, and, uh, particularly in the in the developing world. There's a whole bunch of people that haven't been in the driver's seat in terms of the industrial revolution and everything like that. And they can be included in a way where they can have a real meaningful life. What we want to do is have everybody well, have a sense of meaningful life, doing things that they want to do, not what they have to do, but what they want to do, and collaborating with other people like a jamming session when you're making music. You don't force them to do it or have some outer thing. Yes. It just well, happens, see, you know? That sort of that sort of That's openness, idealistic, baby. That sort of willingness to open yourself up to other people, that sort of open-mindedness um, and ability to stand for other people is, is directly correlated to a sense of personal security. When you feel yes. that you are in control and you feel that you and are you, taken care of, then you can afford to help other people. Yes, and, and if you've got a plate, of, uh, yeah, okay. A sense of, um, I mean, see, the, the sense of personal security itself can come uh, when you aren't, say, paranoid of... Um, Being of, thrown uh, out on the street. If you've got a home where you can go and you can lock the door and you're safe and you got water and the kids have water and you got this and you got those kind of oh, things. Sure. Being a have. Maintaining the system as it is is a very conservative sort of job. And yeah, so far as people still have to show up and haul your garbage away or fix your automated garbage robots, right? There's always work to be done and there's always accounting to do. So well, okay. the, the planet will always be half artists, yeah. half bean counters, I think, in, in, some, in some stretch, no matter what the ground that they're working on ends that's, up playing. That's um, true. That's true in effect. But in, very, in a lot of artistic places and things like that, when somebody is writing a novel or somebody's painting a painting, they're at work. It's creative. Yes. It's not Absolutely. some mundane thing that can be done away with, and yet the the the, the security if people if people could have a security sense and not have to be somebody that feels they have to be. Uh, uh, anyway, I I just think that the cybernetic thing is going, and it keeps coming exponentially and so forth. Um, I wonder if the youth is more in tune with it. I guess they are than the. The older people, like I'm older, so well, I'm more again, sensitive. Again, it's going to be it's going to be split across these two camps. That there are the uh, people who know how how to use Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and how to Our how to buy a new really phone every how. six months. Yeah. yeah, right. There are excellent phone consumers, and then that's most people. But um, I've been on the internet for 20 years, and uh, I've seen it all before. What's happening on Twitter today is old news, and it's almost a joke to see adults acting the way that I did when I was 13 years old, and 
and there were Fill no. Fill that out. Say, say, say that. You've been on Twitter for 13 years or something. No, I've been on the I internet mean, for nearly 20 years. How can and you I be on the internet for like 20 kids. years? You're only 20 years old or something. I'm how 29, old are you? sir. You're what? 29. 29. Oh, what did you waste your time when you were one to nine? What were you doing? Why weren't you do, working out a computer algorithm? I you was wasted out. all your time going to school or something. Silly they're, me. They're, yeah. they're, you know what I'm saying? It, it might be there's a new kind of freedom that's going to be able to be there, a secure sense of freedom and ability to be safe, which isn't a bad thing yeah, for the people to yes. feel. And people are always all they're doing is though. these countries people are, are fighting skeptical. each other. Mm. Mm. Go ahead. Excuse me. Uh, people are skeptical of... Uh, of the system promising them security and utopia if uh, in exchange for a security and freedom that they themselves have control over um, in a personal sense. I think that underlies my commitment to uh, free software um, uh -huh. and that also underlies things like, uh, for instance, even um, your Second Amendment um, in your country there. The sense of, uh, if what? I don't know that I have control against the system, then I don't trust the system to promise to give me a utopian future. And so uh, I'm not sure how this deadlock gets resolved, but it's certainly, for well, they, yeah, the talking to Americans on the internet for, for 20 years, that's, that's, that's what I boil it down to. Yeah, the Second Amendment has to do with weapons, keeping weapons for self-protection. I used to be what you could do when you're out on the frontier, you had to have something to protect you against the bear. Or something is going to come, oh, or sure. somebody in that. But it uh, is a, it's a big contention now. Yeah, absolutely. And, and there's so many parts of uh, of the world today where where the local police are still a half an hour, a 45 minute, you know, drive away if you want to call 911 in an emergency. And such people be, are going maybe, are going to be armed, right? Yeah, right. yeah, I know. It may be uh, essential, as hard as it is to imagine, and as hard as it is giving uh, the course of our 200,000 year sojourn as a species on this planet, it may be we're going to be able to, we're going to be required by the very developments of everything around us to create a world of universal justice for all, all, so that there can be all participation in what is like a gigantic jam session of liberated people rather than a bunch of quarry slaves that had to be beaten with whips and so forth through all of human history, which might not be a bad idea that they could be free to be involved with things uh, in a way where they're a citizen rather than a, uh, a, 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 a vessel of the state that they're, answer <coughs> they're answerable mm -hmm. to through some authoritarian uh, idea of what has to happen to have anything get done. Absolutely. Um, no, I don't um, even understand yeah, it's it going to be. I'm about not sure this, I can uh, understand it myself either. But I think we may be faced with a thing where, when we got weapons that can destroy the whole species, and that's finally a major achievement we've made, collectively. Achievement. It's got to be. Yeah. Well, achievement uh, joke or uh, yeah, or something. But it's it seems to be true. I think it ought to be made available to the population at large. Is that the case and so forth? But then there would have to be something on the alternative side <coughs> that would be equally beneficial to the human society is we, we, we can destroy the species or we can liberate the species in a way that has never been possible in all in human history. Mm -hmm. well, the, the, Maybe the, within the our liberation lifetime. and the expansion of freedoms and Freedom, rights yeah, right, for right. each in individual will be intractable, intractable <coughs> from from uh, a culture of responsibility and respect for one another and restraint from abusing those freedoms. So there's always going to be this well, tension between... Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, right? There's always going to be this tension between, I can do whatever I want, but I'm going to be nice to you anyway, even though I don't have to. I right? can hear, it's very reassuring to me for a young man who usually has said, I can do anything, I can conquer the world. That's the way young men and women seem to be and everything like that, to be actually responsible in a way like an older fellow like me would be saying, now just calm down, young man, and just get back in the saddle and do what you're told. Or something. You understand what I'm saying? Which is you largely the history of the world, yeah. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that, uh, the, 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 those ideas, I see them floating out there today yeah. in, in the world at large, this yeah. uh, balance of freedom and rights with responsibility and right. duty. I, yeah. I think that's a conversation that young people are having right now. You think they are? Numbers. You have faith in the younger people, do you? I mean, the, in general, you're in touch 
as a young person yourself with the larger community, the zeit guy, the, the, the thing. Yes. You're much yes. more than if, I could be, yeah. If there's a but danger, it's, it's the balkanization of culture. It's okay. the fact that there are so yeah. many there's so many different things you could be doing with your time or interested in, and you can make any one thing your whole life. Yeah. That everyone can live in kind of their own bubble. I'm working on a uh, podcast series, which I had the pleasure of uh, interviewing you on, and I call it Life in the Foam, because compared to the Wait 20th- Wait I'm in foam? Oh, is I'm in the foam. Is that thing we did the, the other foam. day on the telephone, is that, is that now out to the public? Oh, Did you out uh, me yes, in it that? Is. Did you make that out to the world? It is. It's readily available right now. Uh, I'm just joking. My... Great. I'm wanting to hear it. I love to hear myself talk. You know? <laughs> oh, you've made a whole career out of it, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, <laughs> right, more or less. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it's okay, wonderful yeah. because what, what you have been doing, um, Harold, for 40 years now yeah. is, uh, is exactly the sort of long-form engaging conversations. This hasn't been scripted. I haven't been sitting here I never knowing know. what I'm going to say. We've just been talking to each other. I and never... It's this sort of conversation that yeah. is essential, yeah. I think, to, um, to uh, keeping alive the spirit of uh, brotherhood and connectedness or common humanity. Um, Amen. And I'm telling you, I never know what I'm going to say when I open my mouth. It's a danger, I'll tell you. And I want to warn you about it as a young man coming up. Don't always just go off at the mouth, you know. <laughs> Learn to be constrained a little bit. Don't just wrap and do all that kind of stuff. Be responsible. Promise me you're going to try to be responsible. Uh, uh, try, uh, try, try, try. I promise to be as <laughs> yes well as uh, I'm playing with you, brother. I'm just kidding with you. That's all. Mm. As Wittgenstein closed yeah. his uh, Tracticus Logico Philosophicus, uh, mm. well, whereof one cannot speak, there of one mu must remain silent. I think everyone has got their little realm that they can speak on yeah. authoritatively because yeah. they love it. Yeah. And that also means that the things you don't know it anything about or you're just parroting what you heard the other day or you're you're just using secondhand opinions yeah, and talking points because right, because yeah. because the, they're easy those are the things that are going to get you in trouble that's that's where i see people shooting themselves in the foot is uh, going talking about things that they haven't explored as deeply. oh don't say that because i'm going to be in deep doo-doo because i've always waded into other people's things and they tell me to shut up all they oh, do is tell me to shut up with my wisdom nobody I'm wants sure to you hear don't. me yeah, well. I'm sh I'm sure <laughs> when you get pushback, you don't, uh, uh, you know, uh, try to stake a self-righteous moral high ground argument and call the My other person. My mother up. probably would have, I think. You know, she she <laughs> okay, was a good, you know, about. yeah, good old mom. Yeah, right. Yeah, but yeah, no, yeah. I understand. No. Anyway, I'm really pleased, you know, to be talking with you and everything. These are it's a major thing, and I think it's so good that you're doing what you're doing. Um, and uh, let's see, we got to start. Doing the, what is the pod series? Is it is something you could let the people know about? Uh, are yes. you got something other than Channer on there? I hope. Uh, yes, um, my first ep ep am I the episode first? was sort am of I a freestyle first, am conversation. I the, am I the first one that you've published on that podcast series? You are my Did first you kick uh, it off formal with interview. You, I want to recommend it to episode. one and all. I want to recommend this young man to one and all. He kicked off his podcast that's going to change the world with Channer. I think that's a good basis for us to have a good friendship in the world ahead. You're, because I seem my first to think that hitter, podcast yes. is worth it. Wow. <laughs> no, no, that's uh, anyway. So I'm pleased you've taken such an interest and you've had it all of your adult life and everything. And uh, is the younger generation really as involved with this as uh, you think they might be or the responsibility that's carried? by up-and-coming youth to, in order to bring new ideas that aren't all out of sync with uh, what is reality and the, re the needs of the reality. But that's well, there a are, charge there for people in the 20s. There are big, important conversations yeah. happening everywhere. And then yeah. what happens is the talking, the takeaway from those conversations gets spread about in uh, the more popular forums like <laughs> Twitter. So yeah. people who are on social media are always getting the old news that's been um, talked about first, you know, by by the people in the more long form conversations like we're having here. Yeah. So uh, yes, I do have great faith that the world is gonna hold together and remain talking to each, to each other s somehow. Um, my podcast is called Life in the Foam and you can find what? it on my website, clintonthegeek.com. Clinton the Geek. The Geek, yep. yeah, the geek. That, that, that's, a, that's an honorable term. Or wait Thank a minute, 
that was a that was a Greek movie that had the geek was somebody who was like a a a, a very bad a bad underdeveloped person geek. What is the uh, meaning of geek? Oh, it's or is it's that always meant sort of a term? nerd or That's someone level, on the outside like yeah, or someone okay, who doesn't right. fit in. Sure. And I was a teenager when I, when I picked that name, so. Oh, it's, well, that's stick a, with oh, it. when you're a teenager, you can get away with anything, man. I mean, you can really, really, really break the, 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 the mold when you're a teenager and everything. Well, they know anyway, so I'm really happy to be in touch with you. I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship, if you don't mind me suggesting that. We could be in touch with one another. We're going to be Absolutely. talking to Bobby Dobbs, our mutual friend, the, the great guru of... Uh, all things cyber, I think, you know, or he's been, you've been involved with him for quite a while, huh? He was a very interesting person to bounce he ideas off to. Yeah. Everything I could come up with, he had a response for. So he's, he's an eccentric guy and, and he's got lots of wonderful ideas. And uh, uh, yeah, so talking to him, him, he hooked me up with you. This is this is a good thing. Yeah, he did. That's where I got it from. And, and I, I'm glad to see he and Carol and <coughs> they're, they're doing very well. He'd been away. He'd been here. We used to hang out a lot with Bob here, and it was always yeah. something, the fundy and the, 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 the butler and all the kind of things <laughs> about this history of the world. And he's got a huge encyclopedic uh, t t take on reality. Some people think it's hard to fathom, but I get that too a lot. People think, uh, you know, that it's just um, you, you, you talk too much. You know? uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, Bob's good at talking. Certainly, there's nothing yeah. I can throw at him that's gonna th throw him for a curve. That's yeah. uh, so that's something real special in a conversation. So yeah. 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 And you you well, and he's such, he's group. such a McLuhan nerd. He's probably one one of the biggest McLuhan, well, McLuhan nerds McLuhan on the planet. McLuhan was a so. major voice. He was a major voice, and Wyndham Lewis and all that kind of stuff. And we got we got to pay attention to the people who've been gone before and put some uh, meat on the bones of this understanding. The technology, not only the cyber net develop, but the technological uh, de extensions of man's capability to affect the environment, because it's really becoming full term in terms of uh, the time in which you have, we've been born into. And it's a special responsibility, I think, for us all to try and understand it. And I thank you, as an older person, for doing what you're doing as a younger man, and wish you all the best. And let's by all means stay in touch with one another, okay? Absolutely. Now, I hate Thank to say you. it, but we've come to the end of time for this program. Not the end of time, but yeah. the end of this program. Oh, we have another minute, I'm told. So we got to say, so say something brilliant about, uh, you know, a closing, uh, a, a, a thing worthy of a tweet. Think tweet. No matter how tweet, big. Tweet, 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 tweet. No, no, no matter how big you think the world is, <laughs> it's always much bigger. And yet, uh, cyberspace is going to be a million times bigger than that, growing every year. So, when you're climbing a ladder, you got to keep three points of contact. Keep when it you're up, keep it up, world, keep it up, keep, keep it up, keep it up, on the keep ground. It, keep it up, more, 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 more. You know, little yeah. tweet, tweet, uh, think, you know, think, tweet, um, think, follow the, you know, the president of the United States just tweet all the time and everything. You know? Oh yeah, he yeah. would, eh? Um, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Tweet, 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 Have some tweet, respect. tweet, tweet, tweet. That's like a little <laughs> bird. One another. The little bird you know, goes tweety, tweet, tweet. A little tact goes a long way. I <laughs> run out of you. Run out of things to say. Run out of things to say at 29, huh? Uh, oh no, yeah. it's I. Yeah. Give me another hour, please. Okay, yeah, another hour. It's coming up. We're gonna be in touch, brother. So good to talk to you. And all in the audience, we gotta say goodbye. And so good, Clinton. We'll be in touch. And this will be up on YouTube by tonight. Oh, wonderful. Take yeah. care, Harold. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, over and out. I love you, Clinton. Yeah, uh, Josie Ann passes on her best regards. She's a good Thank you, Josie Ann. Yeah. You're welcome.